Hi everyone, I have a new bench pin here and I thought I would show you what I do to modify it to suit my needs. So your bench pin, I'll take it out here. This is a GRS holder, which is just the one I have. Your bench pin is a piece of wood and it has one flat side and one angled side. For sawing, you always want to keep the flat side at the top, like facing upward. Um, when I was first learning how to saw and file, we kept the flat side facing up when we were sawing or doing any sort of um, grinding, drilling, things like that. And then we would flip it over so that the angled side was facing up whenever we filed something. So it's harder to see in the video, but the the tapered surface is a better like ergonomic angle for your hand as you're filing. I rarely flip my bench pin over these days, but it's just kind of good to know why one side is flat and one side is tapered. Here, I've already marked out my first initial cuts. This is my bench pin from home, and it just has the single V notch. Sometimes when you purchase bench pins, they come pre-notched. Sometimes there's a hole drilled. Um, usually the ones that I've gotten have been just a solid wedge shape. And you cut your design into it, whatever works best for you. So I'm going to cut this large, larger V-shaped piece, and then I'm going to cut this small shape off to the side and that's because sometimes I'll want to hold things when I'm sawing in this larger area but then other times I will bring my saw frame in from the side rather than straight on and that's just going to allow me a little bit more ease when holding uh, certain smaller items it'll really just depend on the piece that I'm working on but this is a new thing I'm going to try it and see how I like it to cut into your bench pin, you can use a number of different blades. This is a, a number two saw blade, spiral blades that are used for cutting wax are also really handy. Um, that's what I would use if I had one. You could also take it to a um, bandsaw to cut the large shape. Really, it just depends on on what you have. So I have the number two saw blade right now and you're gonna saw into the wood just as you would with metal. You do want to make sure that you're not angling your saw blade because the thickness of the wood will make it easier for the blade to snap. But you just start the same way as you would metal. Take long strokes. And this can be any shape you like. So if you prefer a wider V, go ahead and cut a wider V. I'm just gonna cut this narrow one just because that's my preference. And it will take a little bit longer because you are cutting through very thick material. Back here, the wood's more than a half inch thick so it's gonna take a little while I've cut one side of the V so I'm gonna start from this side and cut the other side and there we go we've got the first V notch cut into the bench. And you can see I didn't really stay on the lines that I drew. That's fine. I was just giving myself a rough guideline because I'll be refining this later with files. Next, I'm going to go ahead and cut this little groove in here. And then we'll continue modifying the bench pin. These are the two pieces that I have removed from my bench pin. So I have this main 
larger V shape for my general purpose sign. This will probably be for smaller pieces. We'll see. Like I said, I am trying out this new kind of sideways V groove for myself. Over on this side, you can use a file, but I'm going to just use my saw. I'm going to cut a much smaller V groove for holding really tiny things while I saw. Like that, and then I'm going to come in from the other side. Your bench pin is a consumable and it's designed to be fully customized and modified for what you need it to do. Um, this smaller V over here, you can see my previous bench pin also has one, is good for holding really tiny items while you're sawing. Because you can just sort of use your finger as a C clamp, hold your piece right over that small little opening and go in there and saw and file and things like that. I'm also going to cut a V groove in the front here. These front grooves are good for resting rings on when you're filing. They're just good for holding other small components against your bench pin while you're working. So I'm just going to do a small V here. Yeah, and these are all fully customizable. These are just what I am going to do. But if you think, oh, I think it'll be easier if I have a V groove over here. Okay, let's do, you know, let's make a V groove over there. And you don't have to do it all at the very beginning when you first are setting up uh, your bench pin. Use Cut the grooves that you know you'll use, and then as you're working, if something becomes a little more difficult to hold, take a file to your bench pin, make a notch in it, carve a groove into it. Modify it as you go. But I'll take it out so you can see. Here's what we've done so far. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to carve a little depression up here so that say you're setting stones, it gives you a little trough where you can place small items and so they don't roll off your bench pin. I will probably also file like a slight groove in here for maybe holding tubing while I cut it. Most of the modifications though are going to come after I've started using the bench pin that will be made for very specific tasks. I'm just going to roughly mark out the little depression that I want to carve. I am not going to worry about sticking to this exactly. Just this will give me a rough idea of where I want that depression to be. You can make it as refined as you'd like. I'm just going to make mine fairly rough for now. And again, I'll modify it as I use the bench pin and as I need to customize it for specific tasks. I'm just using a ball burr. You could use diamond burrs. You could use really anything. Um, because if it's designed to cut metal, it is going to cut wood. Um, you don't need special tools or anything. You can see I've started to cut a slight groove here. I'm going to keep doing that until this whole shape is hollowed out. Okay. You can see here it is not pretty, but I have my small depression carved. You can tidy it up if you want, but you're going to use your bench pin. It is the focal point, the center of your work as a jeweler. So it's going to get beat up. If you try and keep your bench pin nice, it just is not going to happen. So this small little depression will be used for holding little things like this, little stones, anything small that you're working on. I'm just going to take a really coarse file 
If you have a file that is designed for carving wax, that would also work. I thought I had one, but it turns out I don't. Um, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slightly soften some of these edges and make it look a little nicer. Get rid of any like chipped out pieces, things like that. Can do it on the bottom too. Tighten this in. Make it a little bit nicer. So I'm just holding my file at an angle, just softening little edges, getting rid of any sharp parts if needed. This is, again, it's all optional and what works best for you. Sometimes I'll find if I'm not sawing perfectly perpendicular, sometimes if my blade is a little angled and the bottom edge of the bench pin is further out than the top edge, sometimes I'll take a file at an angle and kind of knock that bottom edge off just so that I won't run into issues with my saw blade catching later when I'm using it. But it's all, right now, It's I'm just finessing it a little bit, knocking off any high points. Again, use whatever file you want. Groove in here. I'm actually going to take down this side just a little bit so that I could rest a ring in there. It's hard to do, well, on camera. So I'm just going to round this off a little bit. Online, if you search for bench pin modifications, you'll find a whole bunch of different resources and you'll be able to see what other people do because it is very, very personal. There's not something that's going to work for everyone, but these few little tips will be enough to kind of get you started and um, get you used to modifying your bench. Also using the corner of a flat file, if you need a small little triangular groove, let's say in the middle of working on something, you want a small groove here, hold the file so that one corner, the 90 degree corner is on the wood, and then just quickly file a small little V groove. You could also take, let's say, this is just one I have right here. If you wanted a place where you could rest tubing, I would probably not use a tapered round file, but you could go in, file a groove in here. And this is some place where you could rest rest tubing while you're filing it. You could, there's so many different, different modifications and it's all as simple as grinding, filing, sawing, whatever works best for you. Now I do do one modification to the underside and that is to file a tapered groove here for filing a tape taper on a piece of wire. So I'll show you that really quick. I'm using the corner of my flat file. It doesn't matter where you do it, just whatever works best for you. Okay, so you can see here just a little slight taper. Let me see, make it a little deeper and then I'm gonna remove it so you can see it might be a little bit more but there's this uh, tapered line it's deeper down here and shallower up here if you wanted to file a taper on the end of this wire you could rest the wire in the hole or in the groove and because it's deeper down here than it is up here you're only going to be removing metal from the tip of the wire I'll do a better demonstration later because this is an, an ear wire and I don't want to mess it up. But let me see. You can see I've started to file away just this very top edge. You can create really lovely tapers for making spirals or vine-like elements. It is what I used when I made... This is just sort of just a sculpture. 
based on one of the saguaros when I first moved to Tucson. But all of these sharp points started as, yeah, I think it was 12 gauge wire, maybe. And then I filed a taper on them using that same method. So you can modify both sides of your bench pin. There are really no rules. Just make sure that you are wearing eye protection. Make sure that you're following all general safety rules because you are using a saw. But modify it however you need and what will suit you best for the work you do. I hope that helps, gives you at least a starting point for modifying your own bench pin.